Today, we found out that Google announced a major core update for March. And so let's find out what this means. So these are just my opinions. They are my guesses. I don't think anybody knows exactly how websites are going to be affected by this core update. But of course, people have been producing a lot of content with AI tools. And so immediately, you know, people are jumping to, are my AI websites going to get creamed in this update? And so let's just go through here and see what Google is saying. But what web creators should know about our March 2024 core update new spam policies. The whole purpose of this is to improve search quality by showing less content that feels like it was made to attract clicks and more content that's going to be helpful and people will find useful. And there's some new spam policies. There's a link to that as well. The one thing that I wanna point out is they say this is a complex update. The rollout may take over a month. It's likely there's going to be more fluctuations and rankings than with a regular core update. In the past, I've experienced situations where suddenly my traffic's gone down, bounced back, Sometimes it stayed down. Sometimes all of a sudden it all bounces back to normal. In other words, we don't know what to expect yet with this core update. The one thing that I noticed here, our new spam policies are designed to address practices that can negatively impact search results. And today we're announcing three spam policies against bad practices that they've seen growing in popularity. One is expired domain abuse, scaled content abuse. So when I see scaled content abuse, automatically I think of creating, you know, very large amounts of AI content at scale and site reputation abuse. I guess what I think about when I think of scaled content abuse, you know, if you have a website where you've been creating and posting, you know, maybe 15, 20, 25 posts a day, you know, maybe that's scaled content abuse. I don't know. I don't know what the threshold is, but that's where my mind goes when I see that phrase. So let's go down to scaled content abuse. They say it's when many pages are generated for the primary purpose of manipulating search rankings and not helping users. So this is very gray to me. I've created AI articles which needed very little editing. I thought they were very helpful and didn't need a lot of input from me. So again, what's that balance of, you know, written by AI, versus written by human. And then again, is Google smart enough to know when something's written by human versus AI? I'd like to think that they are. I've had articles that I've written myself with no help from AI, except maybe generating an outline. And then I've put them through Grammarly and then put them through originality.ai and found that you know, originality thinks that over 50% of the article is AI written. So I don't know whether that's a false positive or not, but my point is I have no idea how good Google is at discerning what stuff's been written by a human and what stuff's been written by AI. I'm really not sure what site reputation abuse is about. It says it's when third-party pages are published with little or no first-party oversight or involvement, where the purpose is to manipulate search rankings by taking advantage of the first-party site's ranking signals. They give some examples of site reputation abuse. So a medical site hosting a third-party page about best casinos that's designed primarily to manipulate search rankings with little to no involvement from the medical site. I guess maybe it's a situation where you're using the search strength of your site and then promoting something that's completely off topic. I'd have to read through this more and I suggest that you do too. There's going to be a link in the video description that you can go to and read more about this. Another one, thin affiliate pages. Thin affiliate pages are pages with product affiliate links on them, which the product description and reviews are copied directly from the original merchant without any original content or added value. So for example, I have a page that I created for a special lens cap for this DJI Osmo Action 4 camera. If I were to just go to the DJI site and copy information about the Action 4 camera and go to the site that and go to the site that created the lens cap and just copy their information but add no, none of my expertise or authority 
or experience with the product itself, that could be a thin affiliate page. That's something to keep in mind if you're doing a lot of Amazon affiliate type pages on your uh, blog or your website. Now they also talk about user-generated spam. A user-generated spam is content added to a site by users through a channel intended for user content. Often site owners are unaware of the spammy content. Well, let's say you have a forum that's a piece of your website and on that forum, people are spamming it with links to their websites. This is what I thought of immediately with spammy posts on forum threads. Just be aware of that. So there's quite a bit that they're talking about in this update. I highly suggest that you go to the video description, look at this link, read through it carefully, think about your blog, think about your website and see if any of the things that they talk about here are something that you could be concerned about. But at this point, it sounds like the updates have started. I think there's gonna be a lot of volatility in the SERPs until this update is complete. I would expect to see traffic bounce around. I think that people are going to see their traffic change potentially as these updates roll out. And it'll be interesting to see how AI is affected. That was the piece that concerned me the most was the, the scaled content abuse piece. Here's something that I talked about in the past. I think I'll note it now. And it's something that I called holistic blogging, and it's future-proofing your niche blog against Google Core updates. And what I meant by that, and I still think it's very important, if you have a niche that you're writing in, and you're an expert in that field, or you're a dedicated hobbyist, you know, you're going in, you're adding your expertise to your blog posts. It's really important, I think, to not be completely dependent on Google for organic traffic only. So what does that mean? That means you need to have some social profiles. Maybe you have a Facebook page. Maybe you have a Twitter account or an Instagram account and drive traffic back to your website that way. If you can, I highly recommend having a YouTube channel to support the niche for your blog. For example, every time I make a video and I add it to YouTube, I always have a link back to my website. And I notice in my Google search console spikes in my traffic because anytime I release a new video, people are reading the video description. They see the link to my website and they go visit my website and they also go read some of the blog posts there. So this is going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. But if you don't want to be completely dependent on Google for your traffic, you may have to think about a more longer term approach and a more longer term strategy, because there are definitely going to be websites that will get affected by this update that probably shouldn't be because you know, this is not done by people manually curating every single blog and determining whether or not it's spammy, whether or not the AI content is useful or not. I mean, this is all done in the background with algorithms. And when that happens, sometimes mistakes get made and, you know, website traffic will suffer. So that's why I would, you know, recommend thinking about a a broader approach to content creation to try to save yourself from the stress of these content updates. So I hope this has been helpful. I'm not sure what's going to happen. All I can do is share this information with you. You can go and read it and just prepare yourself to monitor your Google search consoles and to see how your traffic fares, particularly if you've used a lot of AI content on your blog. And I'm in the same boat. Even my own website, MikeShuey.com, I have articles that were at least drafted in AI. So they're part AI. They part, part of it has my expertise. But there are some of the articles that came out where I didn't do a lot of editing. I didn't think I needed to do that because I thought the article was helpful and useful. So I just did what Google said to do, which in the past was AI content's okay as long as it's helpful. But again, you know, that's in the eye of the beholder, right? If Google decides it's helpful, then it's helpful. If they don't, then you're in trouble. And, you know, this could affect me just as much as it affects you. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. I hope this has been helpful. Until next time, take care.